In this video we will be talking about extrapolation and outliers. Extrapolation refers to making predictions outside a range of data. Last video we used this graph to predict a student's GPA based on how much they study each week. So remember that we use x to predict y. For example, if someone only studies for 7 hours a week, we predict their GPA to be about 3.6. It is okay to make these kinds of predictions because the dataset covers this portion of the regression line. Any predictions that are made outside of this range of data is called extrapolation. In other words, the range of x values in this example goes from 1 to 10. And any predictions using x values outside of 1 and 10 is an extrapolation. Extrapolations should be avoided if possible, and I will show you why. If someone studies for 15 hours a week, then we predict their GPA to be about 6.1. There is clearly a problem here. At school, the highest GPA you can get is a 4.5. Anything higher than 4.5 is impossible. This is why we should not extrapolate outside the range of data, because we do not know if the relationship continues to exist outside the range of data. The last thing we'll talk about is the effect of outliers on regression. We have already talked about outliers before, and they are just data points that are numerically distant from the rest of the data set. So essentially, it can refer to a data point that is numerically distant in the y direction and or in the x direction. So for example, in this graph we have three obvious outliers. I will talk about each of these outliers, so I will label them as a, b, and c. This is our main mass of data points, so this would be the modified range for this set of data. The range only refers to the area between the minimum value and the maximum value. An observation is considered to be an outlier if it falls out of this range. In the x direction, 0.3 is the smallest x value and 4.2 is the largest x value. So an outlier in the x direction refers to any value of x that doesn't fall within the interval between 0.3 and 4.2. We see that point A falls within this interval because it has an x value of 2. However, points B and C do not fall within this interval, so they are both considered to be outliers in the x direction. Note that I am not trying to say that absolutely every value has to be an outlier if it falls out of this interval. If I inserted point D right here, this doesn't necessarily mean that it is an outlier in the x direction because it is within proximity of the mass of data points. Remember that generally, the outlier is numerically distant from the main mass of data points, so point D could be considered to be included in the main mass of data points. So anyways, in the y direction, 0.4 is the smallest y value, and 4.5 is the largest y value. An outlier in the y direction refers to any value that doesn't fall within the interval between 0.4 and 4.5. We see that point C falls within this interval, because it has a y value of 3. However, points A and B do not fall within this interval, so they are considered to be outliers in the y direction. So to quickly recap, point A is an outlier in the y direction, point B is an outlier in the x and y direction, and point C is an outlier only in the x direction. What happens if I inserted point D right here? Is it an outlier in the y direction, or in the x direction, or both? It is certainly not an outlier because it falls within the general y interval and in the x interval. However, point D falls outside of this pattern of data. Because it is not an outlier in the x or y direction, but falls outside of the pattern of data points, point D is called a bivariate outlier. The presence of outliers usually have an effect on the position of a regression line. You will find that outliers in the x direction greatly influence the position of the regression line whereas outliers in the y direction barely affect the position of the regression line. So without the presence of outliers, the regression line would look something like this. If I decide to include point A and recalculate the regression line to accommodate the outlier, the new regression line would slightly shift from the original regression line. As you can see, there is only a small change on the regression line when we include outliers in the y direction. Point C is an outlier in the x direction. So if I include this and determine the new regression line, we see that the position of the regression line drastically changes. Outliers like point C are called influential because they drastically change the position of the regression line. Remember that outliers in the x direction greatly influence the position of the regression line. 
Now let's look at point B. We determined that point B is an outlier in both the x direction and the y direction. Although this point is an outlier, it falls within the original regression line, so it will have little effect on the position of the new regression line. If we look at the bivariate outlier, we see that it has a similar result, but only because it is not an outlier in the x or y direction.